Hey everybody, it's nutritionist Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com bringing you another installment in doing keto without the crazy. So we have a couple of business items to get through before we get into today's subject matter of uh, keto on a budget. Um, let's see, first, my subscriber count is almost 8,000 and by the time this video airs, it might already be over 8,000. So welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for the support. I hope this stuff is educational. I hope it helps. Um, there's a reason I say keto without the crazy. I hope that this helps you have sanity and a reason and normalcy around what is supposed to be a very simple, straightforward way of eating, but which has become this crazy complicated thing. And we'll actually talk a little bit about that when we get into the topic. But before that, so almost 8,000 subscribers. And I said as of today, so today is June 13th. It's Thursday, June 13th. And, um, Let's see. Uh, so I said, I always start my videos. This is Amy Berger from toitnutrition.com, right? Toitnutrition.com is my website, but it's mostly my blog. So I um, think that I'm actually better known as a writer, more so than a, a YouTube, you know, clearly not the most professional setup. I'm not a YouTuber like by trade. I'm really a writer first actually and a nutritionist second. My undergraduate degree is in creative writing and my master's is in nutrition. So um, I'm actually kind of living the dream that I get to combine the two. Very few people sort of have that, you know, experience, but anyway, um, toitnutrition.com is where I write my blogs. And um, I just yesterday posted uh, my latest blog. I haven't posted in about three months. And I used to post a lot more frequently. And I love writing. Some of my posts are more lighthearted. Sometimes I take a picture of a food label and sort of rip apart the food label on a product claiming to be healthy and it's actually total garbage. Um, other times, I write very long, very detailed, very scientifically oriented posts about insulin, thyroid function, cancer, um, you know, general metabolism, digestive function. And I think I'm kind of known for that, for better or worse. Some people enjoy very long, detailed posts that they can really sink their teeth into. Other people are like, er, this is going to take more than 10 seconds to read, click, forget it. Um, you know, that's cool. Um, Everyone has a different style. Everyone out there likes someone else. People that don't like long blog posts can find someone else's blog. Good thing there's only 800 million other keto and low carb bloggers besides me, right? So um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that because if you enjoy my videos, if you're kind of old school like I am and you actually prefer reading, hop on over to toitnutrition.com and check out my blog. Um, lots of really, really good content there from the past, but I am gonna try to be posting more frequently going forward because I don't feel good when I don't write regularly. I mean, I write for a living. I, I have like a day gig that I, I write for, you know, for, for income, but my real passion, my love is writing my own blog where I can use my own voice, my own sarcasm and snark, and I don't have to, you know, craft the way I write to fit someone else's message or someone else's brand because I'm writing for a company or some, you know, some other organization. So anyway, do check out to nutrition.com. And if you would like to meet me in person, I'm going to tell you about some events where you'll be able to meet me. And if I'm looking down, it's because I'm looking at my little scheduler. <clears throat> yes. I am super 100% old school. This is my organizer, my little staples, paper, hard copy calendar. I can't have this electronically. It just doesn't work. I'm a paper and pen girl. Um, so you can see me live. And first event I'll be at is Keto Fest in New London, Connecticut, the weekend of July 19th, which is actually my birthday. So come celebrate my birthday in New London, Connecticut for Keto Fest. I'll have links to all of these in the notes. So if you want to, you know, check out the event, buy a ticket, I will put links to everything here. So Keto Fest, the weekend of July 19th, I will be in um, Indiana. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing this wrong if you live in this city, but it's Terre Haute or Terre Haute, Indiana, Saturday, July 27th. I will be there along with world famous Dr. Eric Westman and somebody else who I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm very sorry, but I'll be there. Dr. Westman will be there and, and at least one other medical professional will <clears throat> be there. That's an event put on, <clears throat> excuse me, 
put on by the company Adapt Your Life. Um, so you can even just Google Adapt Your Life Indiana and you'll find it, but I will have links below. After that, August, Canada, land of two of my favorite things, hockey and maple syrup. The hockey I can enjoy as a keto, the maple syrup not so much. Mm. Um, Saturday, August 17th, big, big event in Canada. I think it's called the Great Canadian Keto Summit or the Great Canadian Keto event. Don't quote me on that. The Great Canadian Keto something in Toronto, or should I say Toronto? Is that how you get Toronto? <laughs> if I say Toronto, that's how you know I'm a, I'm a dumb American. Um, but yes, yeah, that's Saturday, August 17th. Lots of other people will be there. Um, I think Jimmy Moore is gonna be there. Jillian Solos, who is an expert on keto for epilepsy, as well as something that it's rare to have a keto expert in, but we need it desperately. Uh, lipedema and lymphedema. You might not have heard of these conditions, but if you're watching and you have one of these, you know you've heard of it and Jillian is an expert, so check her out. Um, lots of other people are gonna be there. I honestly don't remember who off the top of my head, but I know there's a bunch of other like well-known keto people that will be there. And then last but not least, September 21st, Saturday, September 21st in, <coughs> in Ottawa, I'm not sure what what part of Ottawa, but um, I will be there again. Eric Westman will be there, as well as um, Sally Norton, who has a big name for herself talking about oxalates. Oxalate sensitivity is kind of a big issue. Maybe I'll do a bit video on it, maybe not. It's not really my expertise. It is Sally Norton's expertise, and she will be there. Um, you can search for her. She's done a bunch of podcasts over the last few months. All of a sudden, oxalate sensitivity is this hot topic, especially in the carnivore world. Um, and Dr. Robert Sywis, or Sy Sywis is, I'm not sure how you say it. He is awesome. He's actually a bariatric surgeon whose goal is to put himself out of business. He basically puts people on a ketogenic diet or tries to get them to go keto, um, possibly to prevent them from having the surgery or if for whatever reason it's deemed that they it's still the best course of action for them to have the surgery, they can go keto <clears throat> afterward to help them lose the weight and even more so maintain that loss. So the four of us will be there on Saturday, the 21st of September in Ottawa. Again, I'll have links to all that. Can't wait to meet you. On to business budget keto. Um, I am not as prepared for this as I am for most of my videos. I usually write the notes and then like go through the notes once or twice. I haven't done that. So let's see what happens here, guys. Um, cha -cha -cha. Okay. <coughs> Where I used to work a long time ago for the for the US federal government, doing work unrelated to nutrition, but I was already eating low carb for many years. I already had my degree. I was already actually doing nutrition professionally and writing part-time, but my, my full-time job was still with the government. You know, my coworkers knew what I did, and I had a coworker, we were chatting once, and she said, you know, my friend is doing keto, but God, it's so expensive. And I said, well, what do you mean? Like, well, what's expensive about it? She said, well, she has to buy all this stuff and all this stuff. She hasn't even bought any food. And I was like, whoa, whoa, back that keto truck up, you know, back that keto truck up for a second. Um, keto is only as expensive as you make it. The, the, a simple, straightforward, low carb ketogenic diet is not expensive at all. What is expensive? is this weird, newfangled, crazy version of keto that people are making you think you need to do. Um, what's expensive is the stuff you don't need to buy. The ketone meter and the strips, um, MCT oil, exogenous ketones, powdered MCT oil, bars, shakes, programs, apps, sleep rings, step trackers, you name it. Even, even the fancy schmancy like keto baking stuff, coconut flour, whey protein powder, erythritol, you know, xylitol, allulose, whatever, like oat fiber. I'm not against this stuff. I have friends that write cookbooks that use this stuff and good on them, but none of that is necessary for keto. It can make keto more fun to follow. It can make keto more tasty. It can make it maybe easier if you still have a sweet tooth, easier for you to adhere to over the long term, but none of it's necessary. Um, the, the regular version of keto where you're eating 
crazy wacky things like beef and pork and poultry and seafood and eggs and cheese and spinach and broccoli and cauliflower and asparagus not expensive it's only as expensive as you choose to make it so let's talk about that a little bit um <clears throat> i kind of just said said my first point here I'm, i am looking at the notes when you keep keto simple it's really no more expensive than your previous grocery bills and it might even be cheaper because think of all the stuff you're not buying anymore you were probably already buying meat and seafood and cheese and eggs but you were also buying pasta rice cake cookies brownies you know crackers chips biscuits who knows what um so now you're still buying the keto stuff you're just not buying the other stuff maybe you're buying more of the keto stuff but your budget could actually well be the same or possibly even less now just to reiterate something i've said in numerous videos in the past because it really can't be said enough what makes a diet a ketogenic diet is a very very low carbohydrate intake not the mct oil although that can help not the coconut oil not the stevia not the erythritol not the coconut flour um and not the exogenous ketones what makes a ketogenic diet ketogenic is more about the food you're not eating than the foods you are eating so it's about eliminating all the starch and sugar rather than adding god knows what that cost a million dollars so on to the next point if you are concerned about budget on keto get used to leftovers okay grow up and get used to eating the same thing two three four days in a row or maybe the same thing for lunch you know maybe the same thing for lunch and dinner for two days um cook once and eat three or four or five or six times get yourself one of the larger size slow cookers <clears throat> even the very high quality slow cookers are pretty inexpensive these days you can get a pretty good one for relatively inexpensive and it'll last you years and years and years and you will get tons of keto enjoyment out of it if you are inclined you can get one of those instant pots those like new pressure cookers that are much safer than the old one my mom had which the thing would like rattle on the stove you thought the whole thing was going to explode that was back in the day um so one of my tips for this type of of stuff is like like i said in a slow cooker or in an in instant pot or a pressure cooker get a very large piece of meat cook it and you can just slice it for days and days even if you have a big family make two of them um that could be a pork loin it could be a beef roast it could be a whole chicken a whole you know maybe even a whole turkey or pieces of turkey whatever um <clears throat> the other the other thing with eating leftovers is well let's see did i say stock up yet i must have said so before i talk more about cooking in bulk the main point is stock up stock the heck up when stuff is on sale use your freezer to its best advantage use your fridge to its best advantage um if you know if ground beef is on sale for 2.99 a pound get 10 pounds don't waste your time buying one or two pounds get 10 of them and stock them in the freezer um and that way you know when you're cooking it really doesn't take a whole lot of extra time if any extra time at all to cook a large quantity of food than it does a small quantity so let's say chicken breast for example boneless skinless chicken often goes on sale for $1.99 a pound if you're not buying like six packs at a time at that price I don't know what to tell you buy a lot of them if you're going to grill one chicken breast grill eight chicken breasts you can have one for dinner you can slice one up and have it cold the next day for lunch dip it in guacamole dip it in blue cheese dressing cut it up and put it in a salad put it in an omelet put it in a frittata the possibilities are endless and you can do the exact same thing with steak with pork chops with turkey with with any kind of meat basically cook a large amount of it um and have plenty left over so stock up when things are on sale and the way to make things taste different other than the ideas i just gave you like okay one night have the chicken with some kind of sauce on it the next day have it cold dipped in a in a whatever dip or dressing have it in an omelet besides all those ideas one sort of one pan meal that i make very frequently is ground beef or you could do it with ground pork ground chicken ground turkey whatever kind of ground meat in a nice big skillet brown up that meat with 
whatever vegetables you like, chopped up onion, broccoli, zucchini, yellow squash, asparagus, spinach, kale, whatever. I kind of hate kale. Kale is gross. I'm like the anti-nutritionist who eats bacon and not kale. Um, but you know, the, the way to make that taste like a different dish if you're eating it four nights in a row is to use different seasonings um one night make it with like cumin and chili pepper and some stuff like that and you have like a mexican type flavor one night make it with curry powder and some cayenne you have kind of an indian flair another night you could use oregano basil garlic make it italian style um <clears throat> if you keep a well you know, varied spice rack in your kitchen, you can make the exact same food taste like something entirely new, whether it's the ground beef or even, like I said, a plain chicken breast or a plain pork chop, put different seasonings or sauces on it, it tastes completely different. Now, with the eye towards stocking up, toward buying a lot of stuff when it's on sale, obviously, it's not rocket science. When something's on sale, stock up. Um, but another tip is to ask for a case discount. If you're getting non-perishables like canned salmon, sardines, or mackerel, which I often have a lot of in my own cupboard, they often offer a case discount. And a case is usually 10 or 12 cans, depending on the brand, depending on the store. Sometimes they'll give you 10 or 15% off for buying a whole case rather than, you know, four or five cans or one can. Um, and that stuff doesn't go bad. You know, maybe it goes bad after a million years, but there's a reason they're called non-perishables. Canned food lasts forever. So stock up, get two cases. You know, if you have the storage space, don't mess around. Um, food, even non-perishables, especially meat that you can put in the freezer, food does not go bad anywhere near as quickly as we think it does. The expiration dates, expiration dates or sell-by dates on food is in my opinion, mostly a joke. Now, I say that with the caveat that I'm a nutritionist, but I'm not a food safety scientist. I'm not a food you know, safety expert who works in like the microbial lab and studies how quick the bacteria multiply. All I know is that most of that stuff is designed to just sell more food. It's designed to get you to throw away perfectly good, perfectly safe food and go buy more. Um, eggs, eggs should not have expiration dates. Eggs last a very, very long time in the fridge. So if eggs are on sale, especially if it's like the good sort of, you know, pasture raised, higher nutrition eggs, stock up, get three or four dozen and just stick them in the fridge. Uh, you know, vegetables are harder to do that with the fresh. I'll talk about frozen in a minute, but like go big or go home guys. Don't, don't mess around when it's on sale, you stock up. Uh, what else? Even cheese, cheese, um, you can freeze certain cheeses. Certain cheeses don't freeze well, but very hard aged cheeses do freeze well, especially if um, you're gonna cook with them anyway. If you're gonna grate them or shred them on something to melt it anyway, don't worry about freezing cheese. Um, where it may be a problem is if you're like me and you just kind of like to cut pieces off and just eat cheese, if the, te the texture might change in the freezer, um, so you might not want to freeze all your cheese, but if you know you're using a specific cheese for melting purposes or for putting in a recipe, stock up if it's on sale and freeze it. Um, okay, the other, the next point is, and it's an important one, be okay with living within your means. Be okay with buying food that fits within your financial means. And I did a video, I think, a while ago on, on food quality and, and food purity. I am 100% not a purist, not a zealot. You should do the best you can afford. And if the best you can afford is simply what's available at your local supermarket and not fancy schmancy, organic, artisanal, small batch, blah -de blah shipped in on the backs of unicorns, that's totally cool, totally fine. Um, again, what makes the ketogenic diet effective, whether it's for weight loss or for reversing some type of metabolic condition, for improving overall health, what makes it work is the lack of carbohydrate, not organic food, not grass fed, not whatever. As I mentioned in my food quality video, 
I've worked on small farms. I absolutely support that type of farming. If you have the means to get that food, get it, get it, get it. If you don't have the means to get that food, don't worry. It's totally cool. Um, so let's see. In my opinion, you know, they have the phrase vote with your dollars. In my opinion, if you can't afford grass-fed meats, pastured pork, pastured poultry, um, stuff like that, if you can't afford that, you are still voting with your dollars when you go to the regular store and buy meat and cheese and eggs and seafood and canned salmon and all that. You are still using your dollars to say to that supermarket management, I'm not buying pastries and cookies and chips and crackers and pretzels and granola bars and muffins. I'm buying meat and eggs and cheese and dairy and vegetables. Um, so I still think you are still voting with your dollars. You are still sending a political and social message, even if you're getting that stuff from the regular store. Um, okay, next point. If you are concerned about your budget, stop dining out. Stop, period. For the price of a typical restaurant meal, I'm not talking fast food, but like for a sit down nice restaurant meal, for the price of that meal, you could probably buy several pounds of meat, right? Like I said, sometimes, you know, ground beef goes on sale $2.99 a pound. Your dinner at a restaurant could easily be over, or over $20 or $25 for one person, right? For one person. For that money, you could buy several pounds of ground beef, ground pork, sausages, um, you know, that vegetables. So, you know, decide where you're going to spend your money. I, I think dining out is a very nice treat. It's a very nice pleasurable thing to do. But if your budget is so tight, that money is probably better spent buying food that you're going to cook yourself rather than having <clears throat> someone else cook it and serve it to you. So <clears throat> I said I would talk more about the frozen vegetables. Here we are. I'm just following the order of the notes. Um, like I said, unfortunately, fresh vegetables do go bad. That's kind of the point. Food should go bad. Um, so buy a lot if you're going to eat it. You know, if you have a large family or if, if you're going to eat a large amount of a certain vegetable and it's on sale, buy it. But um, I, I wouldn't recommend eating, a, you know, buying a ton of that stuff just because it does go bad. And if it goes bad before you eat it, that's literally money in the trash. Um, stock up on frozen. Frozen vegetables are fine. Um, I, I wouldn't say that they have any less nutrition. Like I don't think they really lose a lot of nutrient quality. Where they might lose some is because if they're frozen and you boil them, some nutrients might leach out into the water. I don't think it's that big a deal. You know, we don't really need to nitpick this quite so much. Um, and you can steam frozen vegetables. If you get one of those steamer baskets, so you put like an inch or so of water in a pot, the steamer basket, and you put the vegetables, then it doesn't leach into the water because the vegetables are not actually coming into contact with the water. They're just being steamed. I, I steam vegetables. <clears throat> I steam fresh vegetables mostly, but I have done frozen vegetables now and then. So just make sure if you do buy frozen vegetables, make sure it's just the vegetables you know sometimes now they come pre-seasoned or they come with a sauce or a sauce packet just get plain frozen broccoli green beans cauliflower they even sell frozen cauliflower rice now i mean how easy is that so that's an ina gartenism any of you fans of the barefoot contessa i kind of want ina garten's life if you know her you know what i'm talking about she just lives in this gorgeous farmhouse in the hamptons she cooks all day she entertains her friends hello um she's loaded in her own right and her husband is the former dean of the business school at yale so they're like kajillionaires and they just get to like eat really good food in the hamptons um but anyway i no longer eat most of what she cooks but i still love to watch her cook it there's something about her that i just something that speaks to me but anyway, other frozen things. You can get frozen zucchini, frozen peppers. Trader Joe's, if there's a Trader Joe's near you in the US, they have a really good selection of frozen vegetables. So um, check that out. Check out frozen vegetables in your own store. And that, you can total, that is dirt cheap to begin with. And then maybe it goes on sale, 99 cents a bag, 99 cents a, a, a square for the spinach. Stock up and stick it in your freezer. I'm doing this because my, <laughs> my freezer's in that direction. So I'm like, stock up over there. Um, 
let's see. Okay. The other thing, I think you know this, if you've been buying food or cooking or shopping for any length of time and you're a grown adult, you probably know it's much cheaper to buy whole foods than it is to buy stuff that's like prepared or half prepared for you. And as an example, things like zucchini and yellow squash are like 79 cents a pound, sometimes 99 cents a pound. Nowadays, for convenience, you can buy pre-spiralized zucchini noodles and squash noodles and carrot noodles and all that at the supermarket, right? They're like four times the price. If you're pressed for time, if you have a very busy life or you have the money, get the pre-done stuff because your time is more valuable than the money. But this video is about doing keto on a budget. I'm going to assume you don't have the money for that. Why pay four or five dollars for a little pack of spiralized zucchini when you could get pounds, multiple pounds of zucchini for that price? Now you have to spend time spiralizing it or don't bother spiralizing it. I never do. Just cut it up and cook it. <laughs> um, but stuff like that, I mean, getting even getting a whole chicken is cheaper than getting chicken breast, cheaper than getting cut up pieces of chicken. Whole foods are always cheaper. Getting a whole head of lettuce or that pack they sell like hearts of romaine three or five to a pack, that's cheaper than getting that cut up salad mix. Um, so that's kind of just a tip that you probably already know, but I'm just telling you. The other thing, before I get to something that's a little more fun and interesting, the other point I want to make is when you're looking at the, the shelf tag in a supermarket, and this is true of the U.S., I, I'm not sure how stores are, you know, how they do things in other countries. It's been a long time since I went overseas, um, well, except for Canada. That, that's not overseas, that's over land, right? Um, in the U.S. at least, and I think in other countries, they not only list the price per item, they list the unit cost. The unit cost is like the price of that item per pound or per quart per gallon, depending on if it's a solid or a liquid or a box of something, whatever it is. So <clears throat> something might look, you know, might look cheap, but per pound, it's, it's actually more expensive or vice versa. Something might look very expensive because maybe it's a big box and wow, that's really pricey because it's the big one. But usually when you buy in a larger quantity or a larger size, the unit cost is cheaper. The price per pound, ounce, gram, you know, gallon, whatever it is, the price per that unit of weight or, or of, of volume is cheaper when you buy the larger size. So if you know you're gonna use the full amount, like if it's a product that you know you use a lot of all the time anyway, get the larger size, especially if it's on sale. Um, you know, don't, don't let them pull the wool over your eyes because it's really like fourth grade math. It's really just kind of addition and subtraction and, and comparing two items. Okay, this one is 49, you know, whatever the price per item is, don't even look at the price per item. This is 49 cents a pound. This other larger quantity is 33 cents a pound, huh? And this is an item I use a ton of. Let me get the bigger one because I'm paying more for the item, but I'm getting more for my money. You know what I'm saying? Because per ounce or pound or gallon or whatever, it's cheaper. So, you know, that's for you to decide what's the most economical thing for you. Um, that's that. Okay. The, the thing I wanted to end with is I actually wanted to sit here and look at some store flyers or circulars, whatever you call them, and go through some of the prices because keto is just freaking not expensive. And let's see why together. Okay. Um, this is Aldi. Aldi is an awesome store. Not, it's not everywhere, so you might not have an Aldi near you. You probably have something similar, like some kind of discount store. So this week, June 12th through June 18th at Aldi, we have fresh St. Louis pork spare ribs, $1.99 a pound. $2 a pound for fatty pork spare ribs that you can put in your slow cooker with salt and pepper, a letter rip, it is so moist and juicy and fatty and succulent, you won't believe it. You don't have to do anything to them. Um, I, 
I stock up on this usually. I have two racks in my freezer right now from the last time they were on sale. Um, chicken tenderloins, $1.99 a pound. $1.99 a pound for something that's basically pure protein. You don't have to deal with the bone. You don't have to deal with the skin. They're practically giving it away. Do you understand me? They're practically giving it away. Zucchini, I just said, 79 cents a pound. Baby Bella mushrooms, those delicious little, little meteor mushrooms, 99 cents for that typical eight ounce package. 99 cents. They're practically giving it away. Um, what else do we have here that is keto? I mean, obviously not all this stuff is keto. I'm looking at the keto oriented foods that are cheap. That's all the food at Aldi. Sprouts, Sprouts Farmer's Market. Um, Sprouts is, it's, it's interesting. Sprouts is kind of known as a more expensive store. And I just moved to North Carolina about six months ago, seven months ago. There was no Sprouts where I used to live. We had Whole Foods. We had some other kind of upscale type stores. But um, I had the mindset that Sprouts was kind of along that line of being expensive. And they're not cheap. But I am routinely amazed at some of the deals that Sprouts offers. And I, I go there like all the time. It's right up the road. It's actually dangerous that it's so close. Um, let's see what's keto at Sprouts. Same, samey, same. This is this week, June 12th through June 19th. Um, cha -cha -cha. So, zucchini or yellow squash, 98 cents a pound. It was only 79 cents a pound at Aldi, but 98 cents a pound for perfectly good keto vegetables is awesome. We've got their baby back or St. Louis style pork ribs are $2.99 a pound, only $1.99 at Aldi. But again, even at $2.99, this is still a steal. Um, red, orange, and yellow peppers, 98 cents each. That's a really good price. Maybe it sounds expensive, like a dollar per pepper, but these are the red, orange, and yellow that are usually more expensive. If you're thinking red peppers aren't keto, let me stop you right there. Um, <laughs> because it's really all about the total amount of carbohydrate you eat. I eat these kinds of peppers very frequently, actually. I eat them raw almost always. Sometimes I'll cut them into like strips and, and saute them up almost for like fajitas, you know, with, uh, with, with steak or with chicken or something. I do that pretty often, but mostly I eat them raw. They're so delicious, cold, they're in the fridge, they're crispy, they're so sweet and juicy. And um, I really don't think they, you know, everybody's carb sensitivity varies but for the most part they don't mess with blood sugar and insulin like i don't know a potato would you know what i mean I, I you really don't need to be afraid of red and yellow and orange peppers i wouldn't eat a ton of them but a couple of pieces no big deal um let's see what else sprouts eggs a dollar 88 a dozen a dollar 88 that's practically free do the math per egg that's dirt cheap a dollar 88 for 12 eggs now these are not the fancy schmancy pasture raised super dark orange yolks hens you know massaged by like ken berry would say panda massaged hens but if you want eggs, because you're on a ketogenic diet and you're on a budget, $1.88 for a dozen eggs, you'd be nuts not to get four or five dozen. Um, what else is going on at Sprouts? Cha -cha -cha. Let us see. What is keto? Hmm. <laughs> I personally am not the biggest fan of berries, but I know a lot of keto people enjoy their berries. So we have organic not even conventional, organic strawberries or blueberries, $2.98 for a, well, okay, for the six ounce blueberries or a pound, a pound of organic strawberries for $2.98 is pretty good. Um, we also have buy one, get one free on some pretty good quality olive oils if you like olive oil. Um, hmm. Thick slice smoked bacon, $4.99 a pound. Bacon prices vary. Sometimes if you get the regular stuff at the supermarket, it could be like $2.99 or $3.99 for a pack. It's not usually a pound pack. Look at the size. Maybe it's 10 ounces or 12 ounces. This is for a full pound, $4.99, thick slice. I've gotten this before. Sometimes it goes on sale for $3.99, and that's when I buy at least two pounds. This stuff is dynamite because it is. They do cut it really thick. Um... 
chicken drumsticks or thighs, $1.49 a pound. Chicken drumsticks or thighs, $1.49 a pound. You'd be crazy not to get a ton of it. And chicken is fine. Chicken's not going to kill you. Keto is not solely beef. It's not solely steak. Um, you can eat chicken. And at $1.49, if you're on a budget, you bet you're eating some chicken. Um, let's see. Cha -cha, what else? You know, I don't see this on here this week, but at Sprouts, very, very often, they have grass-fed ground beef for $3.99 a pound, which is a damn good price. And it comes in the family pack. I think you have to buy like at least three pounds or so, but why wouldn't you for $3.99 a pound? Um, oh, here's one. So this one isn't grass-fed. It's just 85, 85% extra lean. Well, that's crazy. 85% beef is not extra lean. Extra lean is like 93. Anyway, 85% beef which is i think that's the 85 percent fat right and the no lean and the 15 percent fat that's that's how that works amy the 80 20 or 85 15 90 10 um 347 a pound again that is the value pack so it would be multiple pounds why wouldn't you stock up at 347 a pound so then moving along food lion not my favorite store it's kind of ghetto if you're from new york we use that as an adjective it's it's kind of a ghetto store that's a ghetto place that's a ghetto person um that's not meant to be well i guess it is meant to be an insult but you know if you whatever i'm gonna stop talking because i'm just digging my hole and i don't want to dig it any deeper anyway the point is food lion is not the most savory store in my opinion but if you're on a budget you shop where the prices are best for you to shop so 99 cents a pound again zucchini or yellow squash it was 79 cents a pound at aldi but 99 cents still a good price what else do we have cabbage green cabbage 59 cents a pound 59 59 cents a pound it's actually cheaper around st patrick's day it's like 30 cents a pound 35 cents a pound like ridiculous but 59 cents a pound for green cabbage. You can make homemade coleslaw, freaking awesome for a ketogenic diet. You can do like a, a mushu kind of stir fry. I, it's kind of pain in the butt. I used to make it all the time. Cabbage, some egg, chicken, a little sesame oil, some vegetables, scallions, whatever you like, dynamite. Or you could just cut that whole head of cabbage into wedges, stick it in your slow cooker, put a bunch of big griller type sausages on top or some pork chops, let her rip. That cabbage is going to get all that porky, juicy, fatty goodness in it while it cooks. You never had such good cabbage in your life. Um, so what else is here that is keto suitable? $1.99 a pound for boneless pork loin. $1.99. For an animal that was once alive that had bones and skins and eyeballs and you don't even have to deal with any of that this is boneless pork loin all you have to do is buy it and cook it and slice it up for a dollar 99 a pound um 6.99 a pound for t-bone steak if you're on a budget i wouldn't recommend buying this but if you have means 6.99 is a really good price for a pound of t-bone steak uh let's see they're having BOGO on Hormel Bacon, buy one, get one free of 12 to 16 ounce packages. Um, $1.49 a pound for tomatoes. That's not bad. Although this time of year, check out your local farmer's market if you have one because produce, have, meat products and dairy products tend to be very expensive at farmer's markets because they typically are grass fed, pasture raised, organic, all that stuff produce is usually very very inexpensive at farmers markets onions zucchini tomatoes peppers cucumbers radishes i um i have a habit of my eyes being bigger than my appetite and bigger than my stomach and i tend to go way overboard at farmers markets because everything looks so good and it's so inexpensive that i load up because i can't help myself and i come home and i go through my bags and i think oh my god I got all of this stuff for like $20 and the table's covered in produce for, for so cheap. Um, so let's see what's going on. They also have 85% lean fresh ground round for $3.99 a pound. Pretty sweet. Um, anything else? 
Huh, $1.59 for a whole Boston butt. That's a pork roast, a Boston butt. I think that's the same thing as a pork shoulder or a picnic shoulder. You know, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's like what you make pulled pork out of, right? Actually, you can see it here. They have those sort of pulled pork sandwiches. Now, on keto, you're not going to eat the bun, but you can enjoy yourself some sweet pulled pork. There's a ton of sugar-free barbecue sauces available now. Um, so $1.59 a pound for a honking pork shoulder that, again, you could put in your slow cooker, put in your pressure cooker. It's going to be falling apart tender. Keto paradise. Um, what else is here? That is keto. Oh, did we not talk about this? 59 cents a pound for fresh chicken leg quarters. Um, chicken leg quarters is the drumstick and the thigh together in one piece. 59 cents a pound. All you have to do is get yourself a big aluminum type or metal sheet pan, line it with foil so you don't even have to clean it up, couple of chicken breasts on it, shake, shake, shake some seasoning of choice in the oven, 350 for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, depending on the, the cut. The skin is crispy, the meat is juicy, it's delicious, it's keto, and it's dirt cheap at 59 cents a pound. And $1.29 a pound for bone-in chicken breast, a buck 29. Now, that does have the bone, but that's no big deal. Again, you could bake it, you could roast it, you could stick it in the slow cooker, avoid the bone, no big deal. There's so much boneless, skinless chicken, it's as if chickens are not living animals that actually had bones and skin. It's okay to buy chicken with bones in it. It's cheaper to buy chicken with bones in it. What else do I see here that's keto? Not a whole lot right here. A dollar, I mean, this is the, the, the canned tuna fish that's now five ounces that used to be six ounces when I was a kid. Everything's getting smaller and it's not getting any cheaper. Um, so this is the, the, the typical sort of can of tuna, a dollar. Now, this used to be like 69 cents back in the day, but we don't live back in the day anymore. And um, so a dollar a can is a, is a pretty good price for that stuff. And you could stock up, get a ton of it. Um, Tuna is maybe not the most delicious thing, especially not this chunk light. That's my mother, may she rest in peace, used to call this cat food because it's like the kind of mealy, soft type of tuna rather than like the albacore, the solid, more more meaty stuff. Anyway, a dollar a can is pretty good. Lots of beer, lots of wine. Pretty good sale on wine. If you want to watch my video on keto and alcohol, you can see that wine can fit into a ketogenic diet if you know what you're doing. Two for four on cottage cheese and sour cream. Two for four on <clears throat> the 16 ounce container. And I will put in a little plug here for Daisy. I'm not sponsored. Daisy's a huge company. They don't have affiliates. They don't sponsor anyone's videos. Daisy is one of the few brands of stuff like this that doesn't really have any weird additives. It's just like milk enzymes cream. You know, there's not like carrageenan, monoglycerides. It's just the stuff that's necessary to make the food. So $2 for that sour cream is pretty good. Um, the cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is an excellent source of protein, um, especially if you're a vegetarian doing a ketogenic diet. Um, watch the total carbs. It shouldn't really be more than four or five for a half cup serving, but it's very high in protein, which is pretty good. Um, la, 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 la. What else? Green peppers, 79 cents a pound, uh, 79 cents each. Pretty good. I eat a lot of green peppers. I know I mentioned the other colored peppers earlier. I eat a lot of green peppers. Compared to um, orange and yellow, they are lower in carbs. I'm going to reach here for some other circulars that I had from previous weeks just to see what's what here. So here's sprouts. This is from last week. This is, see, exactly like I said. 100% grass-fed ground beef, $3.99 a pound down here at the bottom for the value pack. Yes, at $3.99 a pound, I would want the value pack. Thank you. Again, chicken thighs, boneless, skinless, boneless, skinless thighs, a buck ninety-nine a pound. Stop saying that keto is expensive, please. Organic cage-free eggs, $2.99 a dozen. Now, the cage-free 
kind of a marketing term that doesn't mean they have lots and lots of space to roam it just means they're not locked in cages so don't let that fool you but the point is whether or not they're cage free whether or not they're organic 2.99 for a dozen eggs pretty good um what else did they have here Hothouse cucumbers, four for five. Those long English um, seedless cucumbers, four for five. So $1.25 each, not bad. That's a pretty frequent sale at this store. Um, you know, they have some other stuff on sale that's suitable for keto, but it's, it's still relatively expensive stuff like the Lily's, you know, sugar-free chocolate. If you really enjoy that, $4.99 for their nine ounce bag of chocolate chips is pretty good, but that's still relatively expensive for a bag of chocolate chips you know five bucks um <clears throat> trail mix we're not eating trail mix yogurt yogurt two for five if you get plain full fat yogurt is actually pretty good for keto um if you read it's i think it's in the art and science of low carbohydrate performance by jeff bullock and steve finney um I shouldn't call him Steve. We're not buds. We're not pals, although I've met him. I should call him, you know, Dr. Finney and Dr. Volek in um, either The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Performance or their other book, The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living. They mentioned that the carb counts on yogurt, now plain unsweetened yogurt, not the sugary crazy yogurts, the plain unsweetened yogurt, the carb count is actually less than is typically shown on the label because some of that lactose, some of that milk sugar is consumed during the culturing fermentation process and they don't account for that in the label. So plain full fat yogurt is actually pretty good on keto. Um, if you want something creamy, maybe, maybe you need to eat a little less fat and you're kind of cutting back on the sour cream and the mayo. Yogurt is a pretty good substitute in certain recipes for stuff like that. We have here, uh, again, the shoulder steaks are country style ribs, $2.99 a pound for ribs, $2.99 a pound for their in-store made sausages, chicken or pork sausages. Now check with the, with the people behind the counter at your meat counter, but I've checked almost all stores, their in-house made sausages don't have any fillers. There's no breadcrumbs, there's no wheat, there's no starch in it. It's just the meat and spices and seasonings. I mean, double check if you're concerned about that, but the fact is, even if it did have filler in it, the total amount is very low. And so unless you have like a medical need to monitor every last minuscule carb, I'll say, I will quote Dr. Westman, every, wait, what did he call it? Every little quarter gram of a carblet you know, unless you have a medical need to, to monitor every little quarter gram of a carblet, the amount of starch that you would get from the filler in a sausage is almost negligible. Um, what else do we have? Fresh cut Monterey Jack or Colby Jack cheese, $3.99 a pound. That's pretty good. Again, boneless, skinless chicken tenders or breast, $2.99 a pound. I mean, you can, you might be thinking that's not keto because it's boneless, skinless, it's, it's virtually fat free. Guess what? You can dip it in guacamole. You can dip it in ranch dressing. You can drizzle it with olive oil. You can dip it in melted butter. Making things fattier is the easiest thing to do. So that's not even an issue. Um, do I have sprouts from the week before? I thought I did, maybe not. Oh, you know what? That's over there. I'm not going to go get it. We'll just look at Food Lion from the week before. Food Lion from last week. 99 cents a pound for a whole chicken. Remember I said it's always cheaper to buy a whole food than a food that's cut up. And the, it's even the case for buying a whole chicken rather than buying fullness, skinless breast, or even like the chicken leg quarters, or no, maybe that was 59 cents a pound at one of these stores, right? Whatever. It's typically cheaper to get a whole chicken. And a whole chicken, pull out the stuff in the inside if it came with it, sprinkle some paprika, sprinkle some salt and pepper, get it on a rack, stick it in the oven for an hour, dinner is made um you could put the chit you put it in a pressure cooker it's it's so dead simple to cook a whole chicken a dollar 79 again for those st louis style spare ribs a buck 79. 
Is keto expensive? No, I don't think it is. Thank you very much. 89 cents a pound for a head of iceberg lettuce, 59 cents a pound for green cabbage, two for four on those baby bellas, so only $2. 89 cents a pound for organic. Organic zucchini or yellow squash, 89 cents a pound. Organic blueberries, 2 dollars 59 cents a piece for cucumbers. 59 cents a piece. Um, 79 cents each for, for an avocado. So I personally do not like avocados. Not the biggest fan, but 79 cents for an avocado. Um, so I guess that's it. This video was way longer than I wanted it to be, but I think this little segment, this little circular segment was longer than I planned it to be. Oh wait, here's the Sprouts ad. Here's the Sprouts ad from last week. Let's see what's going on. No, that's this week. This is last week. Oh, I think I already went through this one. I did. Okay. Ha 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 ha. <clears throat> All right, so we are done with Keto on a Budget. <clears throat> I have a bunch more ideas for upcoming videos and I've gotten a couple of ideas from you. So thanks for sending those in. And remember, if you enjoy this stuff, if you like my content, you can support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash to it nutrition. And uh, you can support me for as little as $2 a month. So if you're on a budget, you can spare, if you can spare $2 a month, you can support my making of these videos, my writing of those blog posts, um, if you support me at the $10 level, you get my monthly research review. Um, $30 a month gets you a monthly group phone call, although I haven't started that yet because I, I was waiting for a certain threshold of people to join at that level. So if you want to join at that level, we'll get those phone calls going. And um, if you don't want to do Patreon, I know a lot of people don't, you are more than welcome to support me via PayPal, paypal.com. You can send a one-time or recurring contribution to my email address, toitnutrition at gmail.com. And um, one last thing, remember, I don't always keep up with the comments. So if you have a question for me or a comment that you absolutely must have me see and reply to personally, send me an email directly. That's the best way to contact me, toitnutrition at gmail.com, T-U-I-T, nutrition at gmail.com. Um, I, I, I sometimes read the comments the day I post a video and a day or two after. Beyond that, like I'm on to the next thing. I can't be looking at comments from three weeks ago. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.